Okay, planning board. You are live. You are recording. Phone lines are open. You are good to go. Very good. Thank you very much, Matthew. And welcome to the planning board of the town of East Hampton, the meeting of February 16th, 2022. We have uh, five matters on for sub waiver or site plan review. We have a public hearing scheduled for 7 p.m. And we have a few matters on what we call our regular meeting. So um, we're going to uh, go through, uh, I want to see if uh, we can, how many matters we can accomplish before the 7 o'clock uh, start date, uh, start time for the um, uh, public hearing. So we may go a little bit out of order. But we'll start right now with the Margulies lot line modification. Uh, that's... Um, Will is uh, covering that for the planning department. Ian has the planning board, and I apologize for not remembering the applicant, uh, the applicant's representative on this one. Is that Ms. McCaffrey? Yeah, I yes, believe it's yes. Shannon McCaffrey. Very good. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, Will, take it away. Thanks. I'm going to uh, screen share here. Okay. Uh, this application has been discussed by the planning board before. It is an application to reconfigure the lot line of two parcels by transferring area from lot one to the neighboring lot two, so lot one, lot two. Uh, on the original evaluation, it was noted that is in chapter, as outlined in chapter 220 of the town code, it is required that topographic features such as steep slopes greater than 20% are to be protected. And uh, another sec subsection of chapter uh, 220 also requires the board to protect areas of steep slopes from development. Uh, the area to be transferred mostly contains steep slopes of greater than 20%, and with some areas that go up to 40%. The areas of steep slopes were at the time not illustrated on the map and were required to be added. They now have been. Uh, the planning department also recommended that the board require a scenic easement or similar mitigation to prevent disturbances of any areas greater than 20% slopes within the area to be transferred. Uh, the application was most recently reviewed by the planning board on December 1st, 2021. At that meeting, the board determined that the aforementioned areas of steep slopes should still be protected via, via, via a scenic easement, a building envelope, or another device. Uh, the applicant submitted a revised survey, last revised uh, December 29th, 2021, that does illustrate the areas of steep slopes in the transferred area and includes an annotation regarding covenants and restrictions that will prohibit structures requiring a building permit from being built, as well as no permitted excavation in the area. However, uh, the need for the protection of the areas of steep slopes was just as much about protection against clearing or regrading as it was about building or permitted excavation. Additionally, the applicant did not submit any sort of document outlining these potential covenants and restrictions besides uh, this annotation on the survey. Uh, the the uh, planning department therefore recommends the planning board discuss whether the applicant's measures to address the preservation of those areas of steep slopes are sufficient. Uh, at the same time, the applicant wishes to waive the public hearing requirement. Uh, if the board can come to agreement uh, on the requirement that they adhere to covenants and restrictions regarding the steep slope areas, uh, the planning department has no objection to this. Very well. Uh, does the applicant wish to uh, make any comment? Um, yep, just um, to reiterate what Will said, that we um, have now proposed to have the covenant having no um, structures requiring a building permit and no excavation in the area of slopes that are greater than 20%. Um, as Will mentioned, um, that we didn't um, include any language. Um, I think we could just have it as a condition that before the maps are signed to have the covenant submitted to the uh, um town attorney for approval of language. And um, we also believe that we would like for the board to waive the public hearing and deem this application complete this evening. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, Ian, this is yours. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sam, thanks, Will. Um, you know, uh, this application, I, I, I think, uh, is, is fairly straightforward and, and, and seems like it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but this issue of steep slopes has honestly been lingering longer than I would have expected it to. Um, and, and I don't find the language that's proposed. Well, we don't really have proposed language. We just have this notation. First of all, I, I do want to see that language because 
If you do anything but the easement over this area, which is what the department originally suggested, and I think the board was, um, you know, agreed to, I think we need to see that language because um, it's an atypical way to protect those slopes. So, first of all, we're going to need to see that covenant, I think, before before approval and not have it be a condition of approval because then it's sort of outside of planning and, and this is a planning issue. Um, and about the language specifically, I, I think we need something significantly stronger than that. I, I don't quite understand the resistance to the easement. Um, I remain open-minded about achieving our goal in you know, a different way. Um, but the, you know, we don't want any structures on those slopes. The way you tailored it to make sure that it's only the steep slopes that are encumbered, totally fine with that. But in that encumbered area, the area of steep slopes, we need to make sure that there is, is absolutely no grading and I think no structures at all. So um, I found it a little strange, that language, and, I, and I, I still don't totally understand the resistance. So in my mind, this application is not ready to go. Um, I'm open to waiving a public hearing, um, but the longer this goes on, the more curious it is. And, um, you know, like I said, it should be a simple application, uh, not much land being transferred, but but we just need to make sure those slopes are protected. <laughs> Do any other members have anything they, they would like to uh, pitch in on comment on this application? I'd just like to say that I wholeheartedly endorse what, what Ian just said. I, I, don't, I don't understand how the way we've been doing this in sort of little in degrees, you know, and, and the kind of resistance that um, at, we've been getting on this. Uh, it's, it, it definitely is not, we're not ready. We're not there. I, I feel like I need to see the covenant as well. Anyone else? Uh, Sam, question for for Will. Um, do we know if that that triangular area is uncleared at this point, or cleared, or? Uh, the property is one hundred percent cleared currently. Uh, there's like canopy, but the understory has been cleared out. So they're there are so it's not native anymore. But but there are trees trees in the triangular area and maybe in the steep slope area. Correct. Yes, that's correct. So you know, I agree with Ian. I mean, there's nothing in this covenant about clearing. Um and there are certain structures that don't need a building permit. I think sheds under a certain size and playgrounds and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I agree with uh, Ian and that. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Can we ask the applicant's representative? Yeah. Can we ask the applicant's representative what the uh, why why they're they're holding back on? what we're asking for, why they don't want to do it in the manner that we're asking? The property owner does not want a scenic easement. He doesn't see the nexus of how the scenic easement will, he sees that the scenic easement is like to pres preserve pristine native woodlands and all that. And that's not this property. And it's a little pocket in between two private parcels right now. And so it's not, Benefiting, benefiting the community in his eyes. Um, and so they thought they were getting close, achieving what your goal is that they won't be excavating. Though we can also include that they won't regrade that area. Um, the slopes really is from the development of their parcel and it was from when they excavated out for the foundation. Um, so but if you're willing, if you're willing to add all of the restrictions that would be included in a scenic easement, why then do you are you so resistant on granting a scenic easement? I don't understand that. It just you know I'm, I'm honestly asking. I'm not being. It, it doesn't make sense. I can go back to them again and ask them if they would want the scenic easement. Um, I think they think achieving it by the covenant is better for them. Um, I think they're also open to doing a 
defining a building envelope and excluding this area from the building envelope, if that would make the planning board happy. Well, let, let me ask, let me ask Ian, because he was so eloquent and, you know, so forceful in asking for what he, he did. Ian, if they give us all the restrictions that are included in the scenic easement, would that satisfy you? Um, well, Yes. I mean, because I, I mean, I'd be crazy to say no, because if I'm OK with the scenic easement and we achieve all of those things a different way. But I, I don't think that that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, I, I don't think we should keep going back and forth about this. So I, I don't want to waste the applicant's time. I don't want to waste the department's time and I don't want to waste the board's time. Um, I, I do want this to be a dialogue. I think that we said before, I think Randy brought it up at a previous meeting, you know, the clearing issue came up. The issues, the reason we protect steep slopes is because mainly erosion. And the problem, if you disturb that soil, is it can lead to erosion. The problem with building structures, whether they need a building permit or not, are going to lead to runoff, which lead to erosion. So, um, you know, I, I don't think we achieved that. We're open to having a, a path between the two properties, um, but there's just too much ambiguity still left. And I don't think it's actually a huge encumbrance on the property to have a scenic easement there over that small section in red on the map. So, um, you know, if the applicant, if there should be a dialogue, I'm happy to to talk in a meeting about what, you know, how you would achieve those goals. But, you know, again, I think there, there can't be disturbance of that soil, even if it's technically cleared, because that is the whole point of protecting steep slopes and the same thing with structures being in that section. So um, building permit or not. I, I I just I, I'm guided by the the code which says we have to protect steep, steep slopes, and I I, I share the, the frustration of the other board members in not understanding the resistance to that the apparent resistance to that. So let, let let's um, I, I, how do you think we should proceed? Here? What do what do you think the the next? Well, step? I, I honestly I I don't I I don't think we should keep you know, bringing this back to the board until we have some sort of, this is, I think the fourth time or at least the third. Yeah, um, least. I, I'm, you know, again, I remain open-minded about achieving these goals, but I, I think we've been pretty clear. And frankly, I think we've understood the issue of wanting to traverse this section to get property to property and nobody has any problem with that. Um, so, you know, the ball is in, in the applicant's court, I think, but I don't know how to be any more clear about what we need to achieve. And I don't think that the language proposed does that. And furthermore, I think the fact that the, the covenant, you know, being a, um, a condition of approval, I think further is problematic because we aren't able to then see the language that is protecting the thing we're trying to protect. So um, I think, you know, we got one more time at this. And if, if you want us to have a public hearing or, or vote on the application as is, I think we can do that. But I think, you know, that the, you know, no one's it doesn't, doesn't seem like you have support at this point well i mean it's you know i i don't does, is there any board member that does support it at this point the way it's framed i don't hear anyone and, and it's your property so if you decide that you'd rather not have this encumbered at all and keep it the same shape that's certainly an option um i don't think anybody has a problem with the transfer generally it's just this issue of steep slopes and i think frankly it can be pretty easily solved I will um, go back to my client, and I think the next step would be to prepare some language to submit to the board to review. Um, and I'll go back at them, trying to see if they want to see an engagement. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, I think the message is pretty clear. So, you know, <laughs> report to your client according. So thanks very much, and we'll see you on the next go-round. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I, I think we, we should have time now before the public hearing to go forward with eight five rod highway. Um, so um, th this is um, who has it? Marco. This is yours, and uh, Ed, uh, you have this one. And I apologize once again for not uh, having tabs on who the uh, applicant's representative is on this one. Um, who would that be? I'm Mr. Mr. Chairman, it's Denise Shern and Billy Hajak for okay. the app. Very good. Okay, so we'll go forward with this one. 
now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Marco, go ahead with this, please. Okay. Um, this is an application uh, that's been before the board a few times now. This is to construct a 1,630 foot square foot agricultural barn with a sanitary system and it's to legalize an existing 292 square foot chicken coop uh, with agricultural fencing uh, on an agricultural easement uh, in Wayne Scott. Uh, the lot is unique because 70% of it has an agricultural easement and the remaining 30% has a residence that also has a scenic and conservation easement. Um, the applicant has submitted a sanitary plan that depicts the location of a low nitrogen system and dry wells. Uh, this sanitary plan's title was also revised and the system was relocated below the parking lot as recommended by the planning board in their previous meeting. Uh, the plans will require approval from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services as part of the conditions of approval. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, in conclusion, that's uh, the applicant has submitted those revisions uh, that the board asked for in the last meeting, and uh, provided they agree, the application is complete and can be scheduled for a public hearing. Very good. Uh, Ms. Sean, do you want to uh, make any comments on this? No, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, would just concur with Marco's description. Very good. In that case, Ed? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, I think this is now a pretty straightforward issue. I mean, you did exactly what we asked for at the last meeting. It kind of came down to this issue, I think, of the of relocating the sanitary system, which you've done. And I think there was a titling issue, um, if that's, which I think has been corrected that's as well. Correct. Yeah, so thank you for, for doing both of those things. Um, you know, I, I just feel like I have to say without editorializing too much, just one more time, as I've sort of said before, I think it's a sort of a shame that, you know, that the, that the benefit of this agricultural easement doesn't accrue to the public in a broader sense, but that it is, it is what it is. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, however we may feel about that, it, it is, it is ready, you know, it's ready. So, yeah, I, I'd say let's schedule a public hearing. Very good. All right. Do any other board members have anything they'd like to uh, add to the discussion? Sam, I have, uh, as a former farmer, um, I'm wondering why, I'm wondering if we could um, put the electric line and the water line along the driveway instead of across the field. <clears throat> it looks like the uh, electric line goes right by that little uh, section of driveway that goes over to the barn. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, the, the water line appears to come in from another location, but there's some way to not go right through the ag easement and the field it seems like it would uh, be better. Uh, I believe that road goes to uh, to another property. Um, I think I have it on the aerial that I can show you here. Just, um, So there is another parcel here, and according to lot line, it's not within it. Oh, look at that. Well, they might not be exactly accurate. There could be, um, at the, they could theoretically put it all the way down here, but that would just add, it would just be a giant go around. Um, but that, I, that, that, that's all I can say. Well, Thank you. Uh, Randy, I, I, it's Billy Hajak here. Um, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, and I think you know we can talk to the to the designer uh, and to the engineer and see if that's feasible to relocate them so that they're not crossing through the field. We, uh, you know, we can okay. uh, we'll discuss it with the with them and see if there's any any option of relocating things. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Thank you. Yep. No problem. And that, that doesn't hold up our. Uh, finding that the application is complete though. So um, if anybody, do any board members uh, disagree that the application is complete, ready for approval? Anyone? No? I'd, I'd like to have an answer on that, but that's just me. 
you know. We can provide you with that information at the public hearing or prior to the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I would just, I would agree with, with Randy, and I, I do hate when, you know, these things come up later, and I, I feel sort of silly for not noticing that myself, but Randy's right, you know, you don't, in fact, I think generally in easements, you can't have utilities going across them, so I'm surprised that we didn't catch this, and that's on me as much as anybody else. Um, to be clear, though, I don't think it has to be over on the driveway, you know, way off, it's just that the one that traverses your own property, it's honestly not that much out of the way, um, mm. so... Sounds like the applicant's open to it, and it, it is, frankly, good planning. So hopefully yeah. it doesn't delay, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah, the water line, I mean, the, the idea was they were trying to avoid some of the existing areas that are gardened and farmed. Um, and, you know, the water line, we, we did have to tweak it a little bit based on the location of, the, of shifting the septic system. So we just have to keep a separation to, this, to the proposed new sanitary system. But we'll certainly look at it and um, come up with, try to come up with alternatives to move them out of the middle of the field. Sure looks like there's room there yeah. to go, yeah. you know, sort of southwest around where that garden is and then straight over to the barn. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Does it, I'll ask the board, did, does that get in the way of our finding that it's complete? Or can we find it's complete essentially on the assumption that that's going to uh, that the moving those lines is going to be uh, accomplished. If, if the board is okay with this, I think you can just word your post meeting memo to say that um, you know once the applicant submits a revised survey that relocates the water and, and electrical line, that the application will be complete and ready to be scheduled for a public hearing. That way, we don't have to bring it back to you for one of these discussions. We'll just once we get that amended survey, automatically um, prepare the public hearing notice. Um, the I certainly favor that. I think the applicant's been acting in good faith and has done everything we asked. So um, I'd favor that approach. Yeah, as long as it's good with the applicant, would be good with me. Is it good with the applicant? Yeah, that's fine. Good with okay. us. All right, sorry. Okay, so board, uh, do we all agree on the on the basis of I don't want to call it a condition, but that representation that uh, it's complete and ready for uh, public hearing schedule? Yes. Yeah. Anyone yes. say no? No one says no. Randy? No, I'm good. Pretty good with it. Okay. All right. There we are. So thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know that with seven minutes to go, Eric, unless you tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, I was gonna say we can probably take care of Crystal Muse in, in five minutes. All right. Uh Ed, that one's yours as well. And I apologize for this. I'm, I'm all for three so far on, on being able to reel off who the applicant's representative is on that. Is, I'm Osborne. Uh, is Mr. Osborne. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're going to go with this one right now, uh, Crystal. Thank, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Eric. Yep, and uh, Marco, could you do me a favor and just screen share the, um, the submitted site plan? So basically, um, this is an application that was approved a while ago for... Um, six, uh, roughly 1,600 square foot units in a multifamily uh, residence district. This is um, right by Town Hall on uh, Panago Road. The applicants had a previous modification where, so there's, there's six units on one property. There was a pre, or it was originally approved where all of those units would be built at once um, as one site plan application and project. There was a previous modification that proposed to phase out the development of these units. Um, the first, I have it laid out in the memorandum. The first phase was obviously building the access road. And then in subsequent phases, there would be the building of um, a number of the units in, in sequence. The applicants are now proposing a second modification. The most substantive part of that is to undo the phasing and go back to the original approval, which is to build all of these units essentially at once. There is one of the units um, already completed, um, the construction's completed of it. That's a um, northern or yeah, northernmost unit. Um, there's a foundation and another unit is underway. The, um, the built unit is CO'd. So basically they're proposing right now to undo the phasing, go back to the original uh, approval, which is to build everything all in one, one phase, one as one project. And then also the applicants um, submitted revised sanitary plans 
for the units. When this was approved, it was not required that they have low nitrogen systems. In the interim, they went to the health department, got their approval. They are now required to have low nitrogen systems. Uh, so they submitted revised plans that depict that. And, you know, that's another part of this modification is just to reference the, the correct um, sanitary plan. So the planning department has no objection to either of those um, aspects of the modification and the board should uh, discuss it and determine if they agree. Thank you very much, Eric. That's uh, record time. Uh, does the applicant uh, wish to add anything? Uh, uh, nothing to add. We're in full agreement with uh, the presentation. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, Ed, this one's yours as well. Yeah. So the, the sign on, the, just an interesting point, the sign on the, the stone columns at the driveway going in actually says Pantico Point. Uh, which I, I, th I think is a great name, right? I, I, if, if it's going to be that instead of Crystal Muse, terrific. That's great. Um, not that that's in our purview, but just a, a, a personal comment. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems pretty uncomplicated. I sort of presume this is sort of driven by the fact the real estate market has changed and probably makes more sense to kind of do this, this and sell them all at once while the real estate market is hot. Um, but yeah, this this all seems to be pretty... Pretty much, uh, this is pretty straightforward again. So yeah, I have I have no no issue with it. Seems like it's a go. Okay. Do any board members have anything they wish to add on this particular uh, application? I want to <laughs> characterize it just yet. Anyone? In that case, do we all agree that the application? Uh, do we all uh, approve the modification? Um, of the approval to remove the phasing. Uh, are we all for that? Yep. Yes. Right. Okay. And if the is the modification application itself ready for approval? It is. Yes. No one says no. Okay. In that case, uh, <laughs> good timing, Eric. <laughs> that applicant, we've, uh, we've, we've got what you asked for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Very good. All right. It's uh, 6.58 right now, which uh, doesn't require, uh, doesn't give us much time to do anything. Um, when we come back for after the public hearing, um, we'll have uh, the two um, preliminary site plan evaluation on Springs General Store and uh, the site plan evaluation on St. Michael's Basement Alteration. And then we have a few uh, resolutions that we'll go through. So um, still 658 on my clock. Um, the the public, do we have LTV, do we have members of the public who are uh, looking to comment on the upcoming public hearing? As of right now, you have zero callers. Thank you. Okay. I think you can re start reading the public yeah, hearing. Yeah, you, know, just, you know, you got a minute, so yeah, my my clock shows it at just about seven p.m. So, uh, Ian, it's yours. You can read carefully. <laughs> Take notice that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board at Town Hall, one fifty nine Panago Road, East <clears> Hampton, <throat> on Wednesday, February sixteenth, twenty twenty two. Should we specify Zoom there? Isn't that in the notice? Well, it says at town hall. That that might have been, as you know, this week. I know, I know there's I know there's been a lot of back and forth here um, about you know the governor and everything. So yeah, it, the, the the original public hearing notice that was posted um, has different you know verbiage. It, it's the one that we've been using for. You know, however long now, saying oh, it's over soon. So then Ian needs a different public hearing notes. Yeah, Jody um, Jody probably has it there. Uh, I don't know. We could email it to him or one of us can could you, read it. Well, can you – let's make sure. Um, because for I those, apologize for not catching that earlier. No, but. I, I, listen, I, the, 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 we, we all boomeranged this week thinking that we'd actually have to be in town hall tonight. And then uh, a few hours later, the governor um, <laughs> sent us all back to Zoom, so, uh, which is fine because you know we but we have we have to be consistent with our public hearing notices. 
And if the public hearing notice is called for Zoom, then uh, it needs to say that. So, Jody, I see you are diligently moving. Do we know if it was public, which language was published? So there was, my understanding is that what was published was the Zoom notice, which is what okay. we're doing. That's right. right. Yeah, so okay. so the, the, the notice that Ian has was probably the notice that would have been good for <laughs> about three hours, two days ago. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> um, I, I see LTV just noticed too that there's one caller holding. Yeah, I see that also. So, uh, and now it's 7.01, so we could actually start all over again. Jody, were you able to get the notice to over to Ian? Mine says the same thing that Ian says. Uh. What about the prior one? Do you, do you have the prior one in an That's archive? That's the only one I have. Uh. Should be a... Uh, should be a different one. Um, but, you know, I take a that it says she doesn't have it. But I mean, is that the one that's tacked up on the uh, the cork board in our office there? Yes. So you replaced it when for that short while when we thought that we were going to have to do town hall. Uh, I'm looking for. It must have been that. Yeah. Do you have the one that was sent to the star to the paper? That's the one that went to the star. Really? What went to the star? The one that says town hall. Couldn't have been though, because that predated the uh yeah. Yeah, it sense. Is the applicant with us? Uh, one of the uh Miss Cooley. Yeah. Is any chance you happen to have the uh the notice? The notice I have says town hall. Nancy, I'm going to need some. Yeah, uh, maybe it was. I, I must have just gone as a mistake to the star. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I can look into it, but uh, I mean, it sounds like we're going to have to uh, reschedule the hearing. Uh, let, me, let me get advice of counsel on that. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's. I, I mean, I, I've actually spoken to some individuals, and they were told it was Zoom, but that doesn't mean that that the notice was correct. Unfortunately. Well, well for everybody's mean, sake, is there is there a way so the people who have planned on on being here and speaking that we could allow for that and then reschedule it just so they don't have to do it twice? I mean, I don't know if that helps, but. Well, the problem is whether we have jurisdiction to actually hold the public hearing. That, that's that's really the issue. If if the notice is faulty, uh, I, and again, um, yeah, I'll defer to you. I, well, I don't want to pretend yeah. that, that I that I can give legal advice on that point, but it strikes me that we have a jurisdictional issue. I'm, again, I'm going to defer to counsel. Yeah, no, because when we thought when this thing first started a couple of days ago, we thought we would have to reschedule because it wasn't a, because we thought it was showing um, a Zoom meeting uh, in the notice. So no, it's not it's not proper. Nancy, no. as as a counsel to another planning board, I'm going to back you up and say you are correct. Unfortunately, <laughs> I know. I, mean, I, I know we would all love to just <laughs> do it. Really that, that is a, 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 a highly professional and very yes. great <laughs> <laughs> and, and much yeah. appreciated. So um, there's there. I, I do see that there's someone on the chat who uh, is, I gather, hoping to be able to speak. We apologize for this uh, error but we're not able to go forward with the public hearing tonight. Um, we hope that uh, we, the noticing issues will be resolved quickly. We'll get this back up for a public hearing just as quickly as we can. Uh, we'll all, everyone will cooperate and uh, the public will have its opportunity to speak and uh, the matter will go forward. But uh, again, this is, this is a jurisdictional matter for the public, for the, for the planning board, to be able to address this matter, it has to be properly noticed. So, Sam, just a point of clarification: it has mm -hmm. to be remailed and reposted on the property with the new um, word I'm, language. 
Yeah, I'll, I'm going to leave all of that to uh, the okay. applicant and uh, you know, and council to work out. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. That, that, that's that actually underlies my great appreciation for Ms. Cooley's. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's a pain. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not understanding. I know she understands, but you know, for her uh, willingness to. Uh, <laughs> acknowledge the law. <laughs> I guess that's the best, yeah. best way for me to put it. Yeah. Not the best way. I, I, could be I did hear from a few neighbors, so they got our mailing, and I think Mr. Oscar is on the line. I'll be sure to give him a ring tomorrow. That's right. terrific. And again, we apologize to anyone who had uh, set their night around this public hearing. We'll have to do it all over again. My okay, mind. we'll see you soon. See you soon. Thanks okay. very much. Okay, bye. bye. Okay. All right. Well, with that, we will now turn to the uh, preliminary site plan evaluation of the Springs General Store. Uh, and um, the applicant is, um, the, the, I'm sorry, the matter is being uh, covered by Marco from the planning department. Ordinarily, this would be uh, a matter uh, that has been assigned to uh, Sharon, but uh, Sharon is uh, not with us tonight, so we will hear from Michael Hansen in her place, and it'll be his maiden voyage uh, on behalf of the board. And I see Mr. Bennett. Uh, how are you, sir? Uh, good evening. Nice good to evening. be here. Good, good uh, to Mike, Mike, Shiano, Mike Shiano from InterScience is with us as well. Oh, very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. Nice so, to be here. Thank you very much. So uh, we'll have uh, we'll hear first from uh, Marco, and then Mr. Bennett, and Mr. Shiano. You'll be uh, free to speak, and then after that, Mr. Hansen will uh, lead the discussion. For this is a preliminary site plan evaluation, and the practice on these has been to uh, since the applicant is coming to us asking for guidance, if you will, or some sense of the direction that the board has, we give every every member of the board an opportunity to weigh in on it. So uh, you so that you know you get your money's worth <laughs> and know what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you. appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. So with that Marco, go right ahead. Okay. Um so this is an application to uh, convert an existing 175 square foot storage shed into a retail store for wine sales. Uh, add an indoor table with four seats to an existing retail takeout food store. Uh, maintain three outdoor picnic tables for patrons um, and to abandon an existing kayak rental use. The subject parcel is roughly 59,000 square feet to the tie line or 57,000 square feet. Uh, excluding wetlands. It is zoned NB neighborhood business and is improved with a two and a half story retail building with a second floor accessory apartment and multiple accessory structures. Uh, the existing retail store is known as Springs General Store and is considered by a town of East Hampton as a historical site. Uh, the planning board last granted site plan approval in 2001 for the commercial kayak use. I will post the site plan. Uh, there are two, but uh, this one is most high contrast. Um, so the subject parcel um, is permitted to have two commercial uses. Uh, the site is currently used for the retail takeout food store and kayak rentals. The applicant uh, is going to add an indoor table with four seats to that takeout food store, uh, and they're going to maintain three of eight of the picnic tables outdoors. Uh, it appears that the alteration would maintain the definition of a takeout food store uh, as seating for customers is still primarily off-premises and meets the outdoor seating limitations. The applicant also proposes to abandon that second use of the kayak rental in favor of the retail store for wine, excluding the sale of spirits. Uh, the new retail use is to utilize this uh, storage shed, which is located in the bottom right here. Uh, and the changes to the shed are mostly interior changes uh, with shelving for stock, counter, and a register. The planning department notes that the existing kayak use was approved in 2001 by the planning board, and it does provide access to the existing local waterways. Uh, the local access to marinas and waterways is encouraged by the town's local waterfront revitalization program, uh, which this site is a part of. 
Um, although the applicant is proposing to eliminate that second use, the board may wish to discuss their opinion of maintaining that uh, kayak use with consideration from the applicant. Uh, the exist if the existing kayak use is to be removed, there would be one less location for local waterfront access. Uh, in addition, local residences may still be inclined to launch personal kayaks and boats, as has been conducted for over the last 20 years, uh, if there's no physical barriers um, proposed. Should the existing kayak use remain and the applicant were to pursue an additional retail use, the subject site would be considered a multiple business complex, which is uh, especially permitted in the neighborhood business zoning. Uh, the town code states that there must be a minimum of 10,000 square feet uh, per use in a neighborhood business zone. Uh, the parcel is roughly 57,000 square feet, so therefore it does contain sufficient square footage for three commercial uses. Uh, should the board or the applicant uh, seek such an application. Uh, the kayak rentals are classified under boat rentals by the town code and are allowed uh, in the neighborhood business uh, by special permit. Um, it is noted that other planning aspects, such as the sanitary and the parking and the ADA, would need to be considered for uh, the uses. So the previous site plan had indicated that the site is to provide uh, 19 parking spaces with 11 to be located in the front of the building and eight to be located in the rear of the building. A copy of that is attached to the memo, uh, which is the last, which also includes the uh, resolution to the last site plan approval. Um, it appears that the 11 spaces in the front are pre existing to zoning and that six of the 11 spaces do not meet the town's parking design standards. Uh, the eight parking spaces in the rear were improved, were approved in the 2001 site plan uh, to support the kayak rental use and are to meet the town's parking standards. Uh, I'll just put on the survey just to have a different look of the parking and the site. Uh, so the site plan uh, appears to only illustrate the parking spaces that uh, meet the town's parking design standards. As a result, it appears that uh, six spaces in the front and two spaces in the rear have been eliminated. Uh, it should be noted that the fence and concrete pad um, eliminated because it didn't meet the standards. It doesn't uh, depict the standards. Uh, it's noted that the fence and concrete pad constructed in the rear of the building, which is in this corner here, um, was constructed uh, and has reduced the 24-foot 20 foot aisle uh, width requirement for at least one parking space. Uh, this would eliminate uh, one space of the 11 spaces proposed and should be revised accordingly. Um, overall, it appears that there are 10 proposed parking spaces that meet the town code. The applicant has submitted preliminary parking requirements and it appears that the proposed project would still meet the required parking for two retail uses and an accessory apartment. Um, although the six spaces located in the front do not meet the town code, um, it is noted that the front parking areas are cleared and have been used for parking since 1976. Uh, similar to the kayak use, it is unclear if the patrons would be deterred from using the areas without physical barriers or alterations. Uh, the board, if the board were to encourage the applicant to maintain the kayak use, their previously approved parking layout should be retained and would need to support an additional third use. Uh, the third use of the new retail store would add one required parking space. The town code does not specify parking calculations for the kayak rental use. Um, therefore, the board would, would could consider retaining the previous layout of 19 spaces, uh, reducing the number of spaces provided from the for the kayaks from eight spaces to seven spaces, uh, one of which is to be repurposed for the retail store. Uh, as Noted, uh, the parking in the front of the existing store is uh, undelineated. It is haphazard and conflicts with the traffic along Old Stone Highway and School Street. Uh, the intersections uh, which the subject parcel does sit to the immediate north of. Uh, there is This area is also within a school zone. It does contain uh, numerous pedestrian crosswalks. Uh, prior to a formal site plan application, the applicants and the board should uh, strongly reconsider a redesign, sorry, so strongly consider a redesign of the access and parking at the front of the site. Um, at the very least, the consideration should be established, uh, should be given to establishing one or two uh, specific access points. And I'll just 
go back to the aerial just to show you um, the existing site conditions. Um, at this moment, it's just um, no wall or um, fencing or anything that uh, kind of delineates specific access points. It's all opened. Uh, and there's a crosswalk um, located to the bottom right here. So it is unclear if the proposed project would increase the sanitary flow for the lot or um, would require a upgraded sanitary system. Uh, the previous site plan approvals did indicate that the system is located in the rear of the parcel and it's not a low nitrogen system. Um, the improvements to the shed do not propose any additional water use and it is a minimal amount of square footage. Uh, however, the occupancy limits of the new retail store may be increased, which would necessitate an upgraded sanitary system. Uh, in addition, the added table and seating within the existing takeout food store uh, may also require an upgraded sanitary system for additional sanitary flow. Uh, another criteria for a sanitary upgrade is an increase in parking requirements. Uh, if the applicant were to maintain that kayak rental use uh, and propose an additional retail use, the site would be increasing the um, overall parking requirements. Uh, the applicant should uh, is encouraged to seek an opinion from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services if a new system would be required prior to um, a formal site plan submission. Uh, if the sanitary upgrade is required, the application uh, will likely require an NRSP, which is a natural resource special permit, uh, as it would most likely be within 200 feet uh, which is a setback for sanitary systems uh, to wetlands. Uh, the parcel is also within HPOD, uh, Harbor Protection Overlay District, uh, which does add additional uh, design regulations for the new system, uh, including a four foot separation of groundwater uh, and increased wetland setbacks. Uh, the applicants are also encouraged to contact the Natural Resources Department with regards to uh, potential grants for the new, no, new low nitrogen system. Um, it's also the understanding that the planning department of the planning department that the owners at one point considered a water quality improvement project uh, in order to provide a permeable reactive barrier along Aquaponic Harbor, uh, though this project was never approved or carried out. Uh, both proposals would represent a significant improvement and reduction of the site's impact on the protected water body, which is uh, identified as a local significant fish and wildlife habitat and a critical environmental area. Uh, both projects could be potentially, uh, could be potentially uh, partially or entirely funded by existing programs. Uh, it is noted that no parking spaces are proposed to be ADA accessible. Uh, the survey also does not indicate if there are any ADA accessible pathways to the existing uh, and proposed commercial buildings. Uh, the fire marshal should determine if the occupancy limits of the new retail space is to be increased and to ensure that the proposed improvements meet fire safety codes and ADA access. The project will need to be referred to the Suffolk County Planning Commission as well, as it's located on Aquamotic Harbor. Uh, so in conclusion, um, the application uh, proposes most interior alterations, um, changes to the parking lot, uh, and eliminating the kayak rental use. Uh, this application is preliminary, uh, as mentioned before, and the board should provide initial, initial guidance to the, application, uh, to the applicant. Uh, and the board may wish to discuss with the applicant if the kayak use could be retained as, a local, as an access point to local waterways. Thank you very much, Marco. That is a uh, thorough report on uh, an important, pro important building here in town. So, um, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Shiano, the floor is. But th thank you very much. Let me try to um, let me try to uh, explain to you the whole concept here, um, and, uh, and and uh, and and respond. Um, uh, to, to some of the comments. First of all, my my name is John Bennett, and you're going to skip. You're going to. This may sound like corn pone to you guys. I'm really sorry, but I'm just going to have to uh, explain this to you. This, this is a, a this is a, a potential for m my two older sons who are restaurateurs and 
in, in Manhattan. Um, but this is no intention here whatsoever to be a restaurant. Far from it. I can't have it. They do enough in there. All they're, they're very, very much looking forward to having um, this turn into something that is a very, very, very insignificant change to this. But my two sons, Daniel and Evan, who we've grown up half the time, in Springs, they're both Bennett's. My grandfather grew, was uh, lived on uh, on uh, on Abraham's path in uh, Amagansett. Uh, uh, I'm a Bennett originally from East Hampton. The potential to have my two sons also Bennett's uh, become the proprietors of the Springs General Store is something that uh, I never thought could happen. So I'm, I'm I'm trying very hard to be able to make this happen with a, a, a minimal change to the footprint as possible. Uh, no, not one square foot uh, increase in any of the structures here, um, which is important. And this is why it's been designed this way. Let me try to let, let me try to um, click off some of the um, some of the issues that came up and why uh, we would be uh, not willing to uh, maintain the kayak use. Uh, if it was just a question of this being able to be considered some sort of accessory use that's usable for three or four years of the month, it would be one thing. The problem is it has a multiplier effect, uh, which makes the, the project much, much more complicated and not something that we're willing to do, particularly in light of the fact that uh, in terms of public access, you know, you know as was as was noted when this was first heard for the kayak use, uh, there's plenty of public access down at the end of Shipyard Lane. And I think the board will remember, have a, hopefully the board is aware, I have a resolution uh, from the town board. Uh, you know, the town just bought Steve Latham's uh, former house and took it down uh, for the purposes of public park and recreation not far from here. Uh, there's plenty of public access here. This is not public access. Uh, the proprietor could decide tomorrow. Uh, not to continue the uh, the kayak use, and, and if it if, if it was a simple matter, uh, it, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. But the problem is that going from two uses to three has a, an incredibly significant effect because what it does is increases the parking and requires additional uh, 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 wastewater. It puts us through a much more uh, uh, extended special exception process. It sends us to the, for a natural resources special permit, all for the purposes essentially of putting uh, four seats where 16 are allowed in a, in a, in a takeout food place 16 are specifically allowed by the code and by the way that 16 if you're less than 16 and and michael talked about this uh, the health department doesn't doesn't it doesn't increase your flow it doesn't require any uh, aseptic upgrade but but the effect of this third use in terms of the extended review process and the additional work that has to be done uh, and the different boards that have to be uh, have to obtain permits uh, all to take a storage uh, building uh, that and and make a very limited sale of, of wine there not spirits we're very specific about that they're going to sell uh, organic wines there um, it's just there's got to be a rule of reason it just you know, if the if if the board or the or the town could figure out some way to make this, the um, uh, you know uh, kayak use, which again is not public access, it's private um, uh, kayak use, some sort of accessory use. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but not a third use. Uh, we wouldn't object, but you, I don't think, and your council will tell you this: you can't require me. <laughs> you can't require an applicant to maintain a use uh, that they don't have the will to do, particularly in line, particularly where it creates, from an administrative point of view, an additional round, serious round of permits, a different round of required infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let, let me go through some of the, the, uh, the issues that were raised in terms uh, John, John, just real quick. Um, Marco, would you be able to pull up the aerial photograph that you were showing before? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So let me let me talk talk about a few of these things. Uh, and and again, these are things that the concern is we're trying to do make the least amount of changes to uh, least amount of change to the sense of place 
of this very historic uh, uh, property. Uh, so, for example, is it would it be the most difficult thing to put some sort of landscaped uh, aisle uh, to put choke points for traffic going in and out? And you know, if the board wanted us to do that. I, I think that's well within your jurisdiction, but query whether or not you really want to do that to this place and change the sense of place and suburbanize it. We don't want to do that. We don't, we don't want, I can understand, I can't criticize Marco from, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, a site plan review and, and a, you know, a point of view. This is typically what you, you t like to do, but do you want to do this to that historic place? Uh, it seems to function in sort of a funky, haphazard way. It's part of the sense of place of the building. Is it a big ticket item and an expense point of view to put some sort of landscaping aisle or something like that? But I don't think you want to suburbanize with curbing and stuff like that. So I, I, I think that's an important thing, again, to try to retain the sense of place uh, on that. Uh, in terms of uh, additional, uh, you know, does it in increase any wastewater requirements? There's really no need to go to the health department. Mike will show you if you're conversant with the health department regulations, you can have up to 16 seats uh, in uh, a, a, a takeout place, uh, a coffee shop, a pastry shop. I've done plenty of them uh, on the East End. Uh, the uh, Starbucks in, uh, in Southampton, uh, which we did no septic need for uh, upgrading because there were less than 16 seats there, uh, which is interesting. That's why you have the 16 seats in your own zoning code. It's keyed into the health department requirement as long as you're under 16 seats in what they call single service. You know, there's no dishwashing, there's no sit down, you know, any type of service like that. It doesn't increase the, um, the design flow at all. So there's no need for a septic upgrade. And interestingly enough, I don't quite understand this, but <laughs> the design flow for this retail space is actually less the little, you know, the, 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 uh, the new wine, wine uh, retail shop area thank, thank you mike is actually less for what it is now uh storage i sort of scratch my head when i see that but that's what the health department code says um so th th these are uh you know in, in, in important things for you to understand in terms of uh is this change in uh, of use from a kayak use to a about a 200 square foot uh, size retail uh, wine store is it is it um, is it triggering any septic redesign requirement? No, but what would trigger a septic redesign requirement uh, 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 is the and a natural resources special permit uh, would be the introduction of three uses. So again, for uh, it doesn't it seem I, I don't want to have this tail wagging the dog here. Uh, it's not public access, it's private access. The town has acquired uh, at great expense uh, um, some property in the, in, the, in the area for absolute dedicated parks and recreation and public access. Uh, uh, the kayak use uh, could be closed down tomorrow uh, without any, uh, any anything more. I'm, I'm simply trying to get into a situation where we do the minimal amount of change to this, uh, keep, maintain the sense of place. Those three, uh, you know, pumps, gas pumps, they're preserved. They're going to stay there. Uh, and the hut won't change. It'll just, instead of being storage, it'll have a retail sale of uh, wine, um, introduction of one table. We're actually reducing the number of outside seats. Um, and again, th those outside seats don't add anything. Uh, it don't require any septic because we're still under this uh, uh, redesign because we're still under the 16 seats. Um, you know, if, if, if the kayak, retaining the kayak use didn't have such really significant impacts in terms of expense, delay, time, uh, uh, an, another section, more parking. Uh, you know, by the way, we took away some of the parking because we thought there was an unnecessary amount there. Uh, so uh, and actually put part of the reason why we had... Uh taking the parking out because we weren't a hundred percent certain whether the board would be okay with keeping those six spaces in the front 
Um, so we wanted to make sure to show that we still had uh, sufficient parking that complied with the code. That was the intent of showing the 11 spaces. Um, if the board is, is uh, willing to let us keep those six spaces, uh, those other six that, that are in the front, we'll, 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 we will put them onto our site plan when we go to propose it. But we wanted to make sure that, that the board saw that the work that we were doing was not going to result in a, de a, a an increase in parking demand and that we had sufficient spaces for what we were proposing. So those spaces is important to note. Those spaces are actually on a site plan approved by the board. So, I mean, we can leave them there if the board wants us to um, really, 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 really just trying to, to minimize uh, the foot, uh, the footprint, maybe reduce some of the parking that was there trying to maintain, maybe bring back, this place is some sort of, of, of sense of place. Um, you know, the whole idea is, is, is to have it run generally as it is, is, uh, 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 you know, a takeout place, a food store. Um, and really just uh, about a 200 square foot addition uh, to the retail, but it is a separate use. There's no question about that. It's retail sale of of of, uh, of wine, uh, the code your code isn't totally clear about that, but you know it's going to be a, it's a separate s separate use as far as 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 we're concerned. concerned. So we didn't want to uh, uh, we we didn't want to beat around the bush with that. We just we're calling it a separate use, and and it is. It has to be a separate use for SLA purposes uh, as well. Um, no intent to to really intensify. Uh, any of the use here. I really want to keep this, uh, the changes to the site as minimal as possible. If you tell us to do something, you know, with the traffic, uh, you know, ingress and egress in front, we'll do it. We understand we'd have to do it. We understand you have the full jurisdiction to do it. But I think it would change and suburbanize this uh, uh, this parcel. Uh, and I don't know that that, that you want to do that. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else. Um, you know, I appreciate. I, I'm not trying to say. I'm not. I'm. I'm I, I know I'm arguing. Uh, you know, with Mark, with Marco's comment. I. I I'm. I'm trying. I'm not. Try, I'm not trying to, to. To in any way say that they're not. They're, that they're not good comments, but they have a, you know, a, a real domino effect that we don't. We don't want to entertain, and we really don't want to. Uh, to uh, it, it'll it'll create uh, a, a lot more complexity than is necessary for essentially the introduction of uh, retail sale of wines in a building that is less it is smaller than a parking space on in an existing building. Mike, have I missed anything? Um, just real quick, um, Marco, uh, you had had the um, I guess your your GIS. Uh, um, Ariel, and I, I just, if you were able to bring that up and just maybe zoom out a little bit, I, I just wanted to show, um, show the board, uh, that there are two other, uh, locations right around the corner that, that are actually publicly owned and publicly accessed, uh, to the east. Um, yeah, up, a uh, shipyard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. So at the end of um, Shipyard Lane, there, there there's a there's a, a boat launch there, um, and um, thank you. Um, and and this this lot right here is the is the lot that uh, John was mentioning, uh, 17 Shipyard Lane, which the the um, the town actually purchased in 2017 for the purposes of providing recreation to the public, um, and. Uh, when we when we submit our site plan application, if you wanted a, a copy of the resolution, uh, I was able to find it on the town clerk website. Um, so th there, there there's two publicly available locations for people to launch boats off of uh, around the corner. Um, I completely appreciate wanting to uh, meet what the LWRP's um, uh, goals are with public with with, uh, with water access, but because we are a private lot, um, it, it's not entirely necessary to keep it, especially with right around the corner. It's not like they were um, um, taking away access to anyone in the neighborhood because they do have two other locations they could go to. So I just want to make sure that that was clear to the board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael, um, this is your uh, baptism by fire. <laughs> so. There's a lot of fire. Yeah. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a, uh, an important player. Go right ahead. So, okay. Uh, I had some prepared notes. I'm going to throw them away. <laughs> uh, I am also not for suburbanizing anything. Uh, however, as Marco articulated, parking out front is is haphazard. And uh, that may be part of the charm of going there. Uh, but nevertheless, even without a retail wine store, it is a bit chaotic. There's parking in the back. I, I was there a couple days ago. Uh, I didn't see a sign, uh, maybe there is, that says parking, you know, park in the back, uh, but no one does. They park by the street. Um, and in one map, I counted 25 cars in the front parking lot. It's, it's a controlled chaos. It's, again, it could be part of the charm. But switching from a kayak rental to retail wine sales, I find to be a, a really big change because kayak rentals are seasonal. Like only the hardiest folks are out on Akabonic Harbor, but wine sales happen throughout the year. So with a retail wine store, how can parking be better managed? Not suburbanized, but just a, a little bit better managed uh and i was going to talk about traffic you talk you you were well articulated about traffic my my <laughs> so about the kayak it's sure it, it can be closed but what if i live nearby and i and i carry my kayak can i am i allowed to walk across your lawn and and put my kayak down right at the point where the kayak rental is can i still do that is it still accessible to a local just to to take it over there no it's not it's not it's not public access it never was uh, if, uh, michael since you're new this we don't do q a well I get, uh, that was a rhetorical question so right. okay i <laughs> so my final my final question is about uh about the uh the liquor license i went over there and i just want to this is just a i want to just to clarify what was, is happening uh, there's a notice on the shed that says an application for license to sell liquor at retail sales has been filed is, is this application for a, a retail liquor store or i i, I also saw that there's a, a wine store uh license you can acquire from the state so I, and, and is I, I this just a standard sign? So I just want a clarification about that. Yeah. Should I respond? I don't want to. If, if well, I you know, actually, I, I sort of misspoke there. This is an opportunity to ask questions. So go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, the application is for the sale of wine, period. Um, that's very important because we didn't want uh, to, there to be any. Uh, hard alcohol or spirits. That's why we say in the site plan, no spirits. That's very, very important. The intent is to sell uh, organic wines uh, in that store, which again is about the size uh, uh, of a parking space. Um, no sell of spirits. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes the SLA posting requirements don't exactly, you know, dovetail into, 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 into zoning uh, categories, but that's, that's, I, I can represent to you and you can put whatever you want in the, uh, in the, uh, in a, in a, in a conditions of approval to make sure that this is solely for retail sale of, of wine. Um, yep. You know, fair my enough. Son I'm just, said, I'm just my son said, my my son's actually said, make sure if we want, we can say organic wines. And I said, no, I don't. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have to limit it like that. They just want to make sure that they people know that they're not trying to compete against some of the other uh, stores or anything like that. That that it, it's a very niche sort of thing that they want to sell there um so in any event yeah that that that's what it is and if you want to say no spirits that's fine they have no intense in, intensive intent of doing that i'm just confused by the notices all that's why i was asking yeah, yeah again sometimes the sla notices don't dovetail with 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 the with the zoning stuff so my apologies it, it, it it's only for the retail sale of of wine no liquor and you'll, you'll make that a condition so uh, Absolutely. 
All right. All right. Sam, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go around the table because, like I said, it's a preliminary site plan evaluation, and it is an important parcel. So I want to give the applicant the, the full benefit of the full board. Uh, Randy, if you would uh, go next, and then I'll come around and we'll end with you, Ed. So okay. go ahead. Well, I, I have to admit I find, find it very persuasive to have the Bennett's come back to Springs. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Does that mean that Christy... Christy, the lease, would they take over Christy's lease? Is that? Uh... Yeah. Yep. Okay. They, um, they, they, uh, they're selling the, per, they're in at a conditional contract, conditional upon these approvals uh, to purchase the property uh, and to take over the, and they, uh, there's a buyout agreement for the lease. Okay. So uh, I thought Michael, you know, Marco, I, I, I benefited from hearing everybody's uh, discussion. To me, I wondered, uh, and I'm sure that the applicants already thought about this, but having that wine sales just be an accessory to the, uh, oh, you said it can't be for the SLA. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, that's the, it's a real, it's very, it's frustrating as heck, but the SLA, and it makes sense. It's got to be separate businesses. That's why you can't, for example, New York's very, very tight about this. That's why you can't go into a deli and purchase wine. Sometimes you'll go into food stores and they'll have a separate, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wall that your different door you walk into, but they sort of frown on that even. This is actually great because it's a separate building. The SLA doesn't let you do that. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, 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 we tried, we thought, and we scratched our head and thought maybe we could just make it accessory because really it's just some, some more retail food sales, but we can't, we can't do that. I would do that in a heartbeat, but we can't do that and comply with the SLA uh, restrictions. Because in a, in a, in a sort of practical sense, the I assume there's going to be at least one employee in that building, uh, and there's no bathroom there. There's a bathroom in the general store. Um, so to me, in a it's a, in a funny way, uh, and I understand that there's these. Uh, state liquor authority requirements but in a in a, in a way to me it, it still is an accessory use to the store and in that way you you kind of get a you get away with using the bathroom in the store and um so anyway that that still remains a little gray to me how do we do how do we do a, a wine store with you know, no running water, no bathroom. Uh, obviously, it's got to be heated. It's the, I don't think that building is heated now. But uh, so, so that's that's a little gray to me. How how do we do? How do how do you benefit from what the the general store, the infrastructure already in the general store, and not have to re redo it for the this this other building? Um, so I'll just leave that as a question. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I tend to agree that, uh, you know, I, I lived, uh, on fireplace road up until last year for, you know, not far from the general store. And it seems to me that the, the kayak use in the Harbor there, uh, I don't. I didn't get the feeling, uh, honestly. This is just sort of anecdotal that the the kayak rental business is that uh, alive anymore. Because um, really, that's what that's what we're talking about is the availability of renting the, the the ability to rent kayaks. Because there are lots of people who launch kayaks in Vacabonic Harbor from. Shipyard Lane from Gerard Drive. Um, you can even go in Pussy's Pond and through the uh, the culvert under the road there. Um, 
So I don't I don't have a problem. I understand uh, Marco's arguments, but I, I tend to agree with the applicant that there's there's a, a number of other public access points that this is private property. Uh, we can't. I, I I think we'd be stretching it beyond the limit to say that we we needed a condition of public access to the water here. Uh, I, I don't think it would hold up. So I'm okay with letting the kayak loose go, um, which frees up that parking for other purposes. Um, I think the, uh, the, the question of the parking lot is really interesting because I see, I see the, all the different sides there. And I'm wondering if we could do something with, uh, in an attractive way with landscaping. And I, I agree with John. I, I don't think we want curves and all that. Uh, you know, if we have, uh, so I'm wondering if we could do something with landscaping, perhaps signage, as Michael said, um, where we park the employees in those spaces behind the building and keep the front for, uh, you know, customers. So I guess that's for me, that's a, we, to uh, ex explore some of the ways that that parking lot might uh, retain its character, but be better organized and, and more useful. Okay, thank you, Rudy. Um, Ian and then Lou and then Ed and then I'll go. Ian? Yeah, I, I don't have a, a ton to add. I mean, uh, you know, I was going to say the same thing as Randy about, you know, does this have to be a second use if it's operated by the same people? But it sounds like the applicant um, needs it to be for SLA purposes. And um, so I understand. Um, you know, I think Marco wrote a great memo. I think the idea of keeping the kayaks is great. But but ultimately, um, I think this is the applicant's choice. Um, it's not true public access. Um, I'm happy that there's so much other access in the area. So uh, I, I ultimately am okay with them eliminating that use. I, I think the big issue here is parking. Um, I'm fairly surprised that this retail, turning the storage into retail could reduce the flow and only require one parking space because that isn't very rational. Um, unless it's self-serve, but um, our code is the code. So I, I think you're gonna be in compliance, you know, from what you have now to what you're proposing. I, I do think there would be a way to um, make the access, the ingress and egress better. Something as simply as putting a split rail fence along the roadway. Um, I, I'm not saying that, that that's, you know, I'm not taking a stand there. Uh, I just think there might be some way to control ingress and egress without, I, I think landscaping, frankly, is a bad idea. I think that you're right, as a historic building, we wanna preserve it. Um, I really think the issue is just where people enter and exit. Um, and it could be as simple as, as a fence, you know, limiting access on, on either side of it. You wouldn't lose any spaces or, or anything else. Again, not taking a stand, just a suggestion in the interest of sort of throwing ideas out in this preliminary stage. Um, Otherwise, I think it's been covered, and, and it seems like this is a, um, you know, a doable. It's this is a, a reasonable ask. Okay, thank you, uh, Lou. Yeah, um, I think the applicant was very convincing. Uh, he had a strong narrative, in my view. I agreed with a lot of things that he said. I I agree with his vision. Um, I have a, a couple of issues. That I, that I want to bring up. First of all, I do agree with him. I mean, that that's private property. It's not public access. And if we're going to ask him to keep it for public access, which triggers all these other uh, steps that he needs to take, bureaucratic steps that, you know, are kind of burdensome, I, I think that's terribly unfair. And given that there are other spots that you can launch kayaks, I think that, you know, his point there is very reasonable and I agree with it wholeheartedly. Um, I, I want to ask Marco uh, one, one comment that he made in the, in the memo, because I, I want to just turn the attention to uh, the septic system. Marco says here, 
The occupancy limits of the new retail store may be increased, which would necessitate an upgraded sanitary system. What do you what do you mean by that, Marco? Can you explain that? Um, in my mind of thinking, it, it's that you know previously it was for storage, so um, just no one really expected to be in there. However, if it's for a retail store, I would figure that. Not only is there a person that's working there, but people will be coming and going. Uh, and I would assume that this would need some sort of review from the fire marshal's office uh, as to occupancy limits or fire safety. I'm not quite sure if, you know, what the all the standards and, and criteria that they might need uh, from them. Um, but I would figure that the occupancy limit would be increased. So there'll be people there and there'll be a certain amount that can be a maximum to be inside of there. And as a requirement of one of the things that triggers for a sanitary upgrade um, involves uh, that point number four uh, that posted is that any other activity or land use which in increases the occupancy limits of a building. Um, so that would, in my mind, trigger the sanitary upgrade. Yeah, yeah I, that's how I understand it. Um, yeah. Well, I I tend to agree, and you know maybe it's my bias in that you know that um, you know I, I look I I I agree with Mr. Bennett and what he wants to do. Uh, I agree with a lot of his points, but I think. One of the things that he should do, and whether or not it's uh, something that's required or it's something that he does voluntarily, I think it's very important that he upgrade the uh, sanitary system here. Um, can can I respond? No, I, to that? Excuse me. It's, I, I want to just respond to it in a way that is Sam, if I can, because it's yeah, really no, no, just let Lou, let Lou finish his comment, John, and then and then. Oh, go. I'm sorry, I thought he'd okay. finished. My apologies. No, my that's apologies. that's okay. No, I, I I'm anxious to hear your answer to that. But uh, just one, I just had one other point with regard to the parking, and I I agree with Ian and uh, and everyone else. I guess um, that. Uh, that I agree with you, Mr. Bennett. I, I also don't want to, you know, suburbanize the area. I kind of like the idea of the haphazard way and sort of rural feel that the way it is now. The only the only problem I have is, you know, Michael mentioned that when he went there, I don't know if he was exaggerating, just throwing out a number for his closer to the truth, that he saw 25 uh, uh, cars parked there. Uh, so the question that that rises, raises in my mind is, if, if it's not organized, if it's not delineated properly, then you're going to have people, you're going to have more people parking there than is really allowed by, by code. So um, I think that uh, and the rural uh, uh, issue, I think we need to sort of strike a balance where we want to maintain the, that rural quality of the property, but still do it in such a way that uh, we bring organization and delineation to the parking. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't have any ideas right off the bat, but I think that's something that, you know, you might want to concentrate on. So having said that, I'm anxious to hear your, your answer to the sanitary system, upgrade of the sanitary system. John, John, would you mind if you just held off on that for just a minute and oh, let the rest, sure. yeah, okay. I, 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 this way it'll, it'll be a little more organized and you can, you know, sure, it all out in one time. Sure, <laughs> Okay, very good. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I just don't want to uh, confuse things more than they need to be. Uh, Ed, if you would. Uh, yeah. You know, first of all, I want to you know thank the uh, applicant, Mr. Bennett, for for the thorough description of what your plans are, and I am I'm really I'm really happy that this is a very modest proposal. There have been other proposals for for this property that have been much more ambitious and certainly would have suburbanized it in a way that wouldn't have been wouldn't have made us Springs residents all that happy. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm at this, 
establishment probably four times a week. So I'm very familiar with it and is, it is totally near and dear to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously the ideal thing would have been if we, if we could have all three uses on here, it's, it, we've reviewed, we've talked a lot about why that's not possible and why you know, selling wine as an accessory use is not uh, something the SLA will allow. So I get that. And we certainly are not going to, you know, suggest a business model to you where you decide to keep kayaks over the, over the wine. And, you know, it is true that there are other places to launch. Unfortunately, there are very few places to rent kayaks anywhere in town. Um, but, you know, that, that sort of is, is what it is. I think uh, my observation is similar to Randy's, uh, is, is that that business has sort of fallen off a little bit anyway. But it's sort of somewhat immaterial, really. Um, one thing that I'm not that clear about, though, Marco, is I'm, I'm not really clear about how many spaces, parking spaces, are actually required for the two uses that are being proposed here without the kayak rental. How many is it in total? Marco? I uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just um quickly um trying to go through Mike, is it eleven? It's uh we, we need ten and we are proposing eleven. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think so, that yeah, I think that ten is required, um, but just because of the way some of the lot uh parking spaces are configured, uh by town code standards, there's eleven uh ten. Okay. But that All still right. meets it, so. Yeah, so but there you go. So it's many fewer than the 19 that are noted on here. Um yeah. So, I mean, as, as everybody knows who's ever been here, that, you know, cars park all up and down the sort of southeastern, uh, you know, the, the area between the edge of the property and where the wine sales building is is proposed. Uh, they're, they're usually filled and also kind of a long um, Old Stone Highway. And you know what? It, it works in its own kind of quirky way. Obviously, you know, we're going to have to, you know, improve it to, to some degree, but I, I would definitely want whatever delineations um, need to be made here to be as unobtrusive as possible. I think the idea of a split rail fence is a nice idea. I think, you know, any kind of curbing, landscaping, whatever, will will have exactly the suburbanizing effect that none of us really want. Um, so with sort of six official spaces in the front and, and the balance in the rear, I think... Uh, I think we can. This can be made to work. I mean, it's very clear that you know a lot of people hang out here. You know, a lot of people use the, ta the picnic tables. Even people who are not necessarily you know coming to the store to buy their food, right? It's, it's a little bit of a public park almost on on private property. Uh, but you're going to need to be eliminating some of those tables, so that'll be less of a less of an issue. But you know, anyone who is here on a summer weekend knows that their car is parked all the way down old stone highway you know um so the parking thing is definitely going to be the the issue and concern and um i would just say let's try to do this in a way that uh is the uh, is the most rural and the least suburban but overall i think it's a great project hey, thank you ed um for myself i i, I would say first off that um I think Michael made a good point that, you know, there's going to be a difference between um, a wine shop that operates 12 months in the year and uh, kayaking that works, you know, four months or three months in the year. And the parking demands on that are going to be different. Um, uh, also, with respect to parking, I, I agree uh, with the sentiment of the board, or it sounds like the sentiment of the board, uh, that uh, the current parking uh, configuration or lack of configuration uh, has its charms and uh, does contribute to the rural quality and something that we should all try and, you know, strive to maintain. But at the same time, I would note that, you know, there is no ADA spot. And um, it, that's something that I think as much as we may want to, you know, maintain the rural quality and all those uh, things that we say and we mean, um, the, the ADA is a, an important law, in my view, extremely important law. And it's something that we're charged with, uh, uh, um, you know, taking into very high consideration in our planning. And I, I think that whatever route this application takes, I think that the ADA spot is something that really does need to be incorporated, um, however things shake out. 
Um, I think it can be achieved without significant uh, diminishment of the rural quality of the uh, uh, <laughs> pickup sticks nature of the parking. So, um, so with that, I, I would also say, as someone whose perhaps sole athletic activity is kayaking in Akabanic Harbor, and which came about because of the initially the uh, uh, the kayaking kayaks that are available at the uh, general store, uh, it is private property. It is their business, and it is their choice whether they want to run. Uh, uh, kayaks or not. I think it would be nice, uh, again, I think Michael suggested, if there was some way to accommodate walk-ons uh, with kayaks, but again, I wouldn't want that to impede uh, their the parking. But again, that's you know, you know recognizing the the business imperative that it's you know it's their choice. If they want to have, if the owner wants to have uh, kayak launching there. I do think there's a charm to it, but uh, can't make a guy do the business he doesn't want to do. So um, with that, uh, I'm sure when the full application comes in, there'll be fulsome comments, more specific and pointed comments. But Mr. Bennett, if you'd like to you know, give us some final words. Just a few words. It's eight o'clock and you guys want to get home like everybody does. But uh, just in terms of the sanitary system, um, believe it or not, uh, and Michael will provide uh, this for you, the, the, flow, the flow for the storage uh, is actually more than the flow for this very small uh, retail space. So there is no, uh, we're not triggering any uh, health department requirement for a sanitary system. And I'm going to be really, really frank with you. If, if it, you've, perhaps unintentionally, but because of the other hoops that we have to, would have to go through, a natural resources special permit, uh, and all the attendant delays with that, um, you've actually, in a way, because of the layers, inhibited someone from a project like this putting in an IA system. Uh, if you had some sort of exemption where you could go and say, I'm going to replace an existing system with an IA system, but I don't have to wait online at the Zoning Board of Appeals for a natural resources special permit, uh, we probably wouldn't be having this uh, discussion. But that's not the case. And that's a real, that's something that, you know, I, I, you know if somebody, I, yeah, of course, you know, I, I own a house in Shelter Island. I put an IA system in there. I live in Southampton, but I put an IA system in there. And I didn't even ask for the grant. It's a good thing. But the, but, but it was <laughs> the building department and the health department gave it to me. And even that was frustrating because of the delay. But you've actually, you know, I, I can't walk myself into a, 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 a voluntarily walk myself into another significant layer of regulation and delay uh, uh, by volunteering to do something that I, I don't think I have to do. I wish that wasn't the case. I really wish that wasn't the case. If, if you could walk into the health department and you're saying, I'm going to take a conventional uh, septic system and replace it with an IA system, here's your permit in a week. If you could walk into the building department, here's your permit in a week. I'm not going to make it close to the wetlands. Maybe I'll take it away for some criteria. But you don't have that. You don't have that. So it's unfortunate. Maybe it's something that people should look at. But So that's why I'm, I'm fighting. I don't want to do that. Um, that's important. Um, that's really important. Uh, you don't have someone who's, who, who's, who's doing this any, for any reason other than it, it just has this multiplier effect of delay and additional regulation and additional costs and additional. Uh, it's, it's, it's not even so much the cost as much as the delay, the significant God. delay, number one. Number two, in terms of the parking, it's interesting that you're saying that in terms of the control. My law office was my dad and my grandfather's construction office, and I very lovingly maintained as part of par limit limiting the parking, parking into the law office a, 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 a post and rail fence. So maybe that's the way to do it. You also have lines. John, I know your parking lot. You have lines in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
don't think you were new. Do you? Was relatively new. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's, a, it's a, just just pointing it out. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, but but I mean, uh, I, I just I don't think if you can tell me that I've got to, you know, put curbing out there, you can tell me that I've got to put a, you know, a, a modern, you know, you know, in and out with very choke points. I just I just I, I know you have the jurisdiction to do it. I just don't I just don't think it makes sense here. And, and maybe as as Randy said, maybe we can do it with something as simple as a post and rail fence. Uh, wh- whatever, whatever. What I'm, I'm, I'm all ears on that. And we'll be we'll work with the board. I, John, I, question. Have you have you and Michael looked at whether there's a location on this property where you could put an IA system it's outside of natural resources jurisdiction. We, we will we will look at it, and if we can do it, we'll come back to you. I don't I, I don't want to fight that battle if there's no necessity. I understand why the board pushes people to do it. That's a good thing. Michael, can we look at that? Yeah. I don't know. That- yeah, but we, we'll we'll look at the setbacks to see if there's any place beyond 200 feet from the wetlands that that it's possible. Um, yeah. Can I, can, I Mr. Uh, can I just say something? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, While we're on the topic, um, Mr. Bennett, um, I'm Eric Chance. I'm the assistant planning director. Um, I, At some point in the future, if you'd like to uh, discuss it with myself and Marco, um, not that I'm saying that you're incorrect, and believe me, your, your point to um, simplifying you know, the, the application was, was well noted. But uh, we do have an exemption process from needing a natural resources special permit, even if you are within 200 feet. And that also um, runs along with the grant for um, updating the sanitary system voluntarily. So I do think that there is an avenue where it might not be a week, it might not be 10 days, but certainly not the delay that it sounds like um, that you're afraid of that uh, you could apply through the Natural Resources Department, get a grant, um, not only that, but also be exempted from Natural Resources Special Permit Review. Generally speaking, that means if you're putting the sanitary system in basically the same location or a more conforming location, as long as you're not getting closer to the protected natural feature, which it looks like you have room to do, the sanitary system is essentially behind the building. But we can we can discuss that, um, you know, we can get into the details of that outside of this meeting. But um, if you'd like, I'd be more than happy to discuss that with you because I think it would be, you know, as Marco noted in the memo, a, a great benefit to the uh, environmental conditions of the property. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. All right, All right. Well, let's let Lou get uh, the comment in. Then I want to yeah. give Hanson a chance to give the, the final word and because we have been at this for almost an hour now. Uh, okay, just just real quick, because uh, I just want to make sure, because I, I take note of Mr. Bennett's comment and appreciate him not wanting delays. But I, I have a question about that, and I'm addressing it to Eric now. Um, Eric, could Mr. Bennett go forward with this uh, site plan review, get his approvals, and get all this done, and do the sanitary system... Uh, work and application and process separately. So if that is a more delayed process, it only affects when the sanitary system uh, is is upgraded and not the approval of this site plan that he's looking for. Is, the, is that... the short answer is yes. I, I believe that he can do them essentially separately um, and you know get a site plan approval while working towards the the sanitary upgrade permits but honestly um the sanitary upgrade you know uh, the the longest delay would probably be in getting an engineer to draw plans for for a new system which might take a month or so um the entire process of getting the permit should be right around that exact amount of time if, if not less but that's something i'd like to verify with melissa winslow in the natural resources department who reviews those applications she's reviewed plenty of them um, and they haven't been, most of them have not been delayed in any, you know, unnecessary or uh, extreme, you know, amount of time. So, but that's something I'll, I'll discuss with the applicants, um, uh, you know, outside of this meeting. But I think the short answer is yes. I think they could probably uh, do those two undertakings separately uh, and not be held up from their site plan approval. 
So, Mr. Bennett, I think you've been very convincing, and I, and I think you, you've been successful in convincing all of the board on a lot of the issues that you brought up. I hope that we've been convincing on the sanitary system issue with you and uh, disabused you of your uh, fear that it would delay your project and that it can be done. The, the only comment that I will have to that, and I just can't resist, and I will engage fully with that, is having been a former town attorney in Southampton, I, I know what reasonable time means to applicants and to the municipalities. But I, I couldn't resist. Thank you, Eric. We'll, we'll <laughs> I'll engage fully with that. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Let, sure. me give Michael, let me give Michael Hansen just the opportunity to uh, say anything else that he might have, because he, after all, did I do the... I do not the, have any more. So much has been uh, discussed. That's a, a perfect way to end it. Okay. Uh, I've got one quick oh, comment. Ian, did you have something? I apologize. I don't, I don't want right, to... I, I, have, I haven't spoken too much on this one. Uh, just, I want to be clear. Um, a lot of, you know, comment has been made about organic wines, wines, liquor. Um, sometimes these things come down, you know, later. Or we should have precedent for saying... Wines are okay, liquor's not. To be very clear, I don't think it matters. So, um, you know, well, you're selling something in there, that, that's, that's not not the issue to me. Doesn't matter to you, I understand, but just want to be well, clear about that. Yeah, no, to, but to be honest with you, one of the things that we think helps with that, it's not, it's not a destination for the purchase. It's not going to be, a, a, you know, a true destination. You know, it's more going to be consistent and, like, work with the existing uh, uh, patrons, we we hope you're not going to drive from East Hampton Village, or maybe you do if it's the type of wine you like. But uh, in any event, we, we we're trying to to project something that is you know a, a, a softer thing than than. Uh, than uh, no, no, uh, I, I understand. I just I just don't want to give the wrong idea that that's a deciding factor for me personally. Oh, okay. Well, you know, uh, wine is fine, liquor is quicker. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I think I think what you have gotten out of this is a pretty clear idea of you know the the things that are important to the board. Uh, right. I'll say ADA one more time just so that you remember that that's important. Of course. And uh, <laughs> it is. And uh, thank you. We'll look forward thank to you. seeing the full application down the road. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate okay. it. Very good. Thanks. Good okay. night. All right. And the last, the last site plan. Uh, this is an evaluation as well that we have uh, is for the uh, St. Michael's Basement Alteration. Uh, Marco, again, yours. Ian, you've got the uh, um, the, 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 the uh, board on this. And Ms. Van John, uh, I see you're still here. So I assume this is your uh, your application? Yes. Yeah. Okay, very well. Okay, so let's go. Marco, it's all yours. Yep, I'm just gonna put on the, um, the the main building plan that has the depiction of it, um, I can put on an aerial um, at a later time. But uh, really, this is a very simple application in terms of the amount of work that's being proposed. It's to convert the existing, uh, what, well, it's convert an existing basement storage area of a building containing a community center and a manager's apartment uh, into roughly 469 square feet of living space is part of the manager's apartment. Uh, an additional staircase uh, and two window wells are also proposed to service this uh, manager's apartment. Uh, this site is um, a senior affordable housing community that was given site plan approval in 2010 uh, for units, uh, a new parsonage, a community center, and other features, including the uh, manager's apartment in the shop. It's located off of Montauk Highway, uh, south of Montauk Highway, uh, and Zone A residence uh, in Amagansett. Uh, the project is Type 2, uh, according to pursuant to Secra. Uh, the applicants have stated that the interior alterations, uh, which have already been constructed, um, are not proposed uh, so as to add an additional housing unit, but rather to increase the floor area of the existing manager's apartment. The manager's apartment is currently located on the second floor. Well, there's a little bit of discrepancy of whether or not it's located on the second floor. Um, but as the plans say, they are uh, in the basement and the community center is on the first floor. Uh, 
that's just the main proposal, and the board should pretty much discuss the uh, uncommon design of it. Uh, the square footage of the manager's apartment uh, will likely impact the maximum sanitary flow for the residents, um, allowed for the residents. Prior approval from the Suffolk County uh, has reserved 225 gallons per day of sanitary flow for the 984 square foot apartment. Uh, adding any square footage more than uh, 216 would result in elevating the flow uh, into a higher category of 300 gallons per day. Uh, the proposed addition may require transfer of development rights to allow for the additional sanitary flow and may require uh, a border review, uh, which is their version of variance from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. Uh, the applicants are encouraged to contact that agency if they haven't done so already. Um, the comments from the fire marshal have noted that the building plans will need additional revisions to meet the state fire code. Uh, those comments are attached to the memo. Uh, although the proposed alterations are primarily interior, uh, there is no formal site plan that has been submitted and one should be required. Uh, an as-built survey prepared by a licensed surveyor uh, should also be submitted. Uh, although it's relatively minor, the information regarding lot coverage should be depicted and submitted. Uh, the proposed building plans do contain discrepancies that should be addressed by the applicant. Uh, the proposed basement floor plan uh, does not depict the um, added living space. Uh, in addition, the sheet illustrating the sprinkling uh, the sprinkler system has illustrated the window well in an alternative location as opposed to the location that illustrated on other plans. Uh, so in conclusion, the improvements are minor in square footage and are mostly interior changes. But the applicant should address those uh, concerns regarding increased sanitary flow, the fire marshal's comments, and the revised building plans. Uh, the built landing board should discuss if they find the proposed additional living space is appropriate and if any changes should be made. Okay, thank you very much, Marco. Um, Ms. Van John, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, just first, just because this plan is up on the screen. Um, so under the, the discrepancies. It says that, Marco, you had said that the proposed basement floor plan doesn't depict the added living space. That is what we're looking at here. It, it, as you that, said, that it's a minor mistake. It, okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure you didn't need any other changes there. Um, but we'll take a look at the problem with the window well and we'll get that corrected. Um, so yeah, so basically beyond that, uh, what we're looking at here is that the, the manager's apartment just needed some more living space. Multiple members of the family work on the property um, and they were just looking for a way to expand a little bit into some unused space without expanding the footprint of the building. Um, the current apartment is on the second floor and then the first floor of the building is community space. So that obviously could not be converted to anything um, because that's used by members of the community. And the basement was unused storage space. And basically there's just utilities, electric panels and stuff like that down there. So they wanted to try and use that space and add it to the apartment. Um, we're happy to work with the fire marshal on whatever his comments are. I am a little confused by his comments because I just see a, a code section and he doesn't really tell us what exactly needs to be changed. So I will try and meet with him to get that clarified so we can get that figured out what exactly he needs because we're, we're happy to do that. Um, and then regarding the health department, we are, we're working on that. We don't have a final answer yet, but we'll, we will try and get an answer from them or at least the direction we're going in before our next resubmission to this board. Um, beyond that, I don't have anything else unless anyone has any questions for me. Okay. Um, just really quickly, uh, so for sorry. clarification, sorry. Um, so Madeline, you mentioned that the apartment's on the second floor? Yes. Okay. Uh, and that, um, okay. And then you're adding space to the basement for the second floor apartment. Uh, just my understanding is correct. Yeah, there's a stairwell that goes directly from the second floor apartment down two stories to the basement. That um, and that's how that is connected. It's a separate stairwell, um, and then people are separately entering the first floor to um, to use the community space that would remain a separate community space. Was it built that way to be uh, 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 the basement was intended to attach to the apartment upstairs? Um, it's always attached, at, and it's been for storage. Um, 
it's always been accessible from upstairs. Yeah. So, so, they, yeah. 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 Uh, so they had a basement. You just had a pathway to get there around the uh, common area or the the, the uh, project's common area. Okay. Right. Uh, Ian, okay. Got it. Ian, uh, if you would. Yeah, uh, I um, this is an odd an odd plan, uh, frankly, and I'm uh, I, I do have some concerns. Um, I, I think that the, the main concern is is obvious, which is is this an you know an addition to an existing apartment or is it a new apartment? Um, from the plans, it, it sure looks like there's kitchen space upstairs and downstairs, um, and I, I don't think that you can have two kitchens in a single family residence so I, I think that that'll have to be remedied of course I, if I'm wrong on that um, that's very that's possible too um, so that, that, that that's my primary concern is 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 there is there potential here to rent these out as, as truly separate units I think um, you know that's just the first look because it's such a strange design if that proves not to be the case uh, you know I guess I'm trying to be open-minded about this and everything else. I think the other questions would be, you know, the septic implications of adding the space, you know, converting from storage to living space um, and potentially even parking. Um, I, I don't think that that's, you know, and it, the parking would be an issue, but septic is something that you've said you're going to look at. Um, so th those are my initial comments. Um, i curious what the rest of the board has to say. Okay. Um, well, does anyone else have any comments about this uh, application? Uh, in, in, and in particular, the, uh, uh, to paraphrase the question from the board, is the uh, addition of the uh, gross area of the second floor apartment an, an acceptable design? Uh, the addition of the basement, do we find that to be acceptable? Because that's really the, the crucial question here. Um, Pam, I have to say, uh, as a someone who's sitting on the housing committee for a while, but I'm not wearing that hat, is that we've been trying to build places like St. Michael's to get people out of basements so they could live in, uh, you know, a non-basement space. And so I just have an initial reaction. I think, I think it's been expressed by Ian and others that, um, is is it really a is it really what we want to do to create living space in a basement, and and does the fire marshal allow that? Is there how do you get out of there if there's a problem? So anyway, I I I have a I have a real kind of cautious reaction to this one. What's your reaction though to the idea that it's it's basically to accommodate the the caretakers who are living there now and uh you know it's, it's not like it's not like we're creating a basement space for someone to live but we're allowing a basement space to be used by someone who's already living there what happens if the they they hire a new manager who's a single man and he'll have a lot of space to rumble around it yeah, it's it's never going to be a, a separate unit. It it can't be a separate unit, and it's never going to be rented to to a resident, um, you know, a standard resident of the complex. No, I mean, I, I look. We can certainly have a covenant or some sort, something that confirms that forever. I'm yes, absolutely. Overly concerned. I am a little bit concerned about the fact that there's a code vi you, you know, you're working against a code violation here. I mean, that's why the application was brought. But, uh, and, and so whatever that violation is has to be addressed and cleaned up. Right. So um, the, code, the code violation stems from the fact that they um, made some of these improvements prior to getting approvals. It isn't that the, they're not necessarily up to code. It simply was that they didn't get the necessary approvals mm -hmm. because they didn't realize they needed planning board. Um, and then also there was a question about egress. Um, that is in, that's most of the reason why we are actually in front of you is because our only exterior change is to add a window well for proper egress. Um, and that, that triggers the need for planning board because we're making exterior changes there. So mm -hmm. there is there is full egress. It's not they don't have to go up two stories of stairs or anything like that to to get out of this area. Well, that would be in an emergency. You're talking. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the emergency egress. So Madeline, may I, so what is the rationale for the second kitchen? Well, that's not a, a full second kitchen. Ian's right that that's not allowed by code. Um, it's a fridge and a sink, which is allowed in a family room in a basement space pursuant to town code. But it does not have a full kitchen. It isn't allowed to. Um, and we would be happy to have a covenant to that effect. It's no stove in the basement, right? Yeah, there's no cooktop of any kind. Yeah, Right. It's a, it's a fridge and a sink, kind of a, a bar space, which which is allowed in basements. <laughs> All right. Um, do any other board members have any other comments uh, on this? No one? Okay. Well, um, uh, sorry, I was muted. I was trying to say something. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I, I just wanna... want to give my two cents. Uh, yeah. I, think this is, I think this is different than, uh, you know, creating uh, living areas in the basement for large homes and, or, you know, expanding the living space of uh, those types of structures. I think, you know, I'm sympathetic to the narrative here, and I think it, this really has to do more with the uh, the lack of living space for a certain demographic in the area. And, you know, it seems to me that uh, the people who are living in this apartment need extra space because of expanding family or whatever. And I think if they can do it and still meet meet the code requirements, as Ian mentioned, parking and sanitary flow and that kind of thing, uh, and with the egress, I think it's something that that uh, we should approve. And I think it's it's a good thing that we allow something like this. So those are, those are my comments. Um, Michael, I think I may have uh, skipped over uh, if whether you have any comments on this. So, I mean, it looks like you got a wet bar and you're going to have a, is it going to be a, I don't like the expression, but a man cave? Well, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Or is someone going to be sleeping down there? You know, I, that's my question. I'm just curious, but, uh, no, I, Hey, I understand, uh, Lou made some very <laughs> important points about just needing just more space. Yeah. I got three kids. I need more space too. Well, I, I you know, I think that the whole, the, it seems to me that most of the concerns that we have, um, could probably be addressed with restrictions that, that we build into any approval. Um, the, the things that, that uh, the red flags, namely that it's an extra kitchen, seems to be obviated by what we're hearing. Uh, the, uh, it, it, it seems like we're accommodating the folks who live in the place right now and in uh, in anyone else with a family who might come along later, uh, and I I think we could I think we should be able to work around most of these issues. My only concern again is that we've got code violations, and those code violations, you know, you're here now in front of the planning board. I want to make sure that in connection with any applicant, any approval that we might give that those code violations are wrapped up quickly um, because I don't, I don't want the planning board process to elongate the code violation cure process. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I, my understanding is that the code violations would, would be cleared up basically by obtaining planning board approval and then a building permit. Yeah. Um, so I, we're, Going to try and move that along as, as swiftly. Yeah, that's, that's, we're, we're going to encourage that. So, okay. Does anyone else have anything on this? No. If not, if not then uh, I don't know. If, Ed, I, did I? Did I? Oh, yeah, I'm skipping around. Did I? Did you have something you wanted to add on it at all? Or I, no, I asked my question. I'm good. Okay, I apologize. Okay, in that case, Ms. Ben John, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in the next go round. Okay. All right. With that, we are wrapped up with our uh, our, um, our work session, and we'll move into the regular meeting. The first, we have a series of um, uh, resolutions. The first one is CMPSJ lot line modification. Lou, this one would be yours. Yep. Uh, in the matter of the application of CMP 
SJ LLC lot, mod, lot line modification, Suffolk County tax map number 300-176-8-22 and 23. Uh, I have read the lot line modification approval and I move for its uh, approval. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passed 6 nothing. Okay, Wayne Scott Sewing Society. Randy, yours. You're muted, Randy. I'm trying to find the resolution on my agenda. Uh, <clears throat> you want me to do it? Sure, go ahead. Sam. Okay. Oh, here it is. I got, got it. it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. In the matter of the application of Wayne Scott Sewing Society Incorporated site plan, site plan approval. Uh, I've read the resolution and move for its adoption. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Passed six nothing. Okay, Twinkle Farm, move yours. In the matter of the application of Twinkle Farm LLC site plan, Suffolk County tax map number 300-193-2-9.7, I have read the site plan approval. Before, um, but not, I'm sorry not to cut you off, Lou, but um, I'm noticing at least in the copy that I have that there's some uh, Scrivener's errors and, and typos. Uh, which I suppose we should go through before. Uh, them, why don't you read them and we'll suspend Lou's motion for now. Read, read those in, please. Okay, so I guess we were using, um, you know, uh, something else as a, you know, another approval as a template. So uh, in part A, project description two, use requiring site plan, it says community center. <laughs> That's I think not, not the case for this application. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. Jody, Jody revised the, Oh, she did? Yes, we did. You're right, Randy. Yeah, they were about that later in the day. You're absolutely right. But yeah, was, I have, I think I have the updated, updated version, the second okay. updated okay. version. Very good. So, so then you continue and just note that you're using the, the one that came in later this afternoon. That, that, that's right. 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 Uh, go ahead. Okay, I'll start again. Thanks. In the matter of the application of Twinkle Farm LLC site plan Suffolk County tax map number 300-193-2-9.7, I have read the site plan approval which was modified and in which errors were corrected from the prior uh, document, and I move for the, uh, the adoption of this, this modified document. Perfect. Is there a second? Rand, uh, thank you, Randy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Six past six, nothing. Uh, next, I'll, I'll do 92 South Euclid in Sharon's absence. Um, in the matter of the application of 92 South Euclid Avenue, so county tax map 300 49 1 15 for site plan special permit approval. I have read the resolution and I move for its adoption. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passed six nothing. And finally, Michael, as if you haven't had enough to do tonight. <laughs> in the matter of the application of Gottlieb Renovation Unit 11, site plan, Suffolk County tax map 300 49 6 21, I have read the site plan approval and move for its adoption. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed six nothing. Okay, folks. We do not have a meeting next week because, among other reasons, it's a short <laughs> week. So, uh, so we will uh, meet again on, I guess that would be March 2nd. Um, and does anybody have anything that they want to add, issues they want to raise, complaints they want to lodge before we? Take a resolution, a motion to adjourn. Oh, Chair, I just want, 
Oh. I just want to mention, I just lost my service a couple times through this. Um, I, for some reason, my internet went, but whatever I missed, I'll, I'll watch the. I'll watch it on LTV, but I think I got most of it. It's just brief periods where I just totally lost service. Yeah, well, if there's any comments that you need to uh, make nunk pro tunk, then uh, you can go right ahead and do that. Okay, okay, great. It springs. <laughs> it's not good service where I am. Yeah, well, yeah, well that's, a, that's another issue for another meeting. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay, all right. Uh, anybody has anything? If not... I just wanted to, to, just to ask, so you're the... Uh... The likelihood is that the on uh, March sixteenth, March sixteenth, that the Zoom, the re the regulations requiring Zoom will end. Does that mean that it will be mandated to go one hundred percent live? It, 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 yes. Is yeah. that right, Nancy? Correct. Yes. And the only thing that um kind of messed us up this time is, you know, it was. We were waiting to see, is there going to be an extension? And we were talking about this because it messes up, obviously, when we send out notices to the star and everything. Sure, sure. So, you know, we're hoping we can get some sort of heads up if March 16th is actually really like the final time with Zooms or if there's going to be another extension. And, you you know, who knows? With It's it's a tough issue. It's it's really... Um, Right. Well, but when, when, when it is finally lifted, when, when the rest, you know, the, the existing regulations are lifted, right, it means that there will be no opportunity for mixed hybrid type meetings, right? No, we have Either to have one or the meetings. other. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the open meetings laws back mm -hmm. in. Well, the, ch the changes that were made were uh, they were Im impacting the open meetings law. And it's right, exactly. law. You know, we're, we're, we're not the only people who have to worry about complying with SECRA or whatever statutes there are. Uh, right. Every every planning board, zoning board, and uh, other similar board across the state had the same <laughs> uh, three hours of uncertainty uh, when, when it was lifted and then unlifted. So Yeah, it was crazy. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know it. So, all right. Like I say, anybody else have anything? If not, will someone please make a an appropriate motion? So motion to close the meeting. There you go. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed six nothing. Thank you. See you along.